Uh, greetings in the name of the Most High Yah. Hey, look, guys. Hey, so um, I just got some uh, some things I wanted to say. Uh, I was really thinking about it like a couple minutes ago about uh, the whole community policing. That's the term we need to use. That's the term they use. Um, if I have reached out to you, I'll say it again. I'm going to keep repeating it. I do have the handbook that uh, is what they use for community policing. Um, it's what they... Uh, it's their guidelines. It's uh, kind of like a um, a syllabus, if you will, uh, for the program. Now, mind you, I'm sure that the people who receive this handbook is probably those who are prominent in your life, which would be i.e. like your family, um, significant other, uh maybe your friends, associates, and ultimately your neighbors. I mean, you know, the primary persons who you have a daily interacting with. Now, mind you, the people that you see in the street theater, um, people that you see in passing, a lot of those people, which I've come to learn recently, are like actors. And when I say actors, meaning that you have to look at the, you have to have discernment and wisdom to look at the person, the type of person, and see, okay, is this person really an actor? Um, you know, it's easy to make noise. You know, if you tell somebody, you know, we're gonna pay you to make noise around this person for such and such reason, that's not an actor. Actor is when you are out and about working, uh, they know your schedule, and they are um, specifically and purposely uh, trying to hinder you or stop you or infringe on your peace and your daily activities. Um, you know, those especially being the ones uh, where you're being most productive. Those are when the street actors and street theaters, uh, workplace mobbing, those are more so the people who are kind of um, governed to act accordingly. You may even see new hirees, new management, um, and a lot of times those are the same persons who will be um, involved in your uh, harassment. But getting back to what I wanted to uh, speak on, um, I was kind of uh, meditating on, you know, this whole phenomenon and the, the experiences that we go through. And the Most High led me uh, to the word that this is preparing us for battle. So, you know, the, the title of, you know, what I'd like to be speaking on for the next couple of seconds is just going to be, um, you know, labeled preparing us for war, preparing us for battle. You know, a lot of times um, when, you know, you see militaries, right, they all have their strategies. They already, they always have their different methods of going about to counter right the enemy you know they always have you know secret codes languages um and tactics that ultimately is to defeat the enemy right so we know that the enemy is using their tactics right spiritual warfare ephesians 6 and 12 right um we also uh understand that they're using manip the spirit is manip manipulating um, technology, which is spiritual, right? We know technology has been here since, um, you know, the creation because the Most High has made everything. Um, but it's more so advanced in using people, right, that the Most High have created, manipulating them, so on and so forth. But I honestly believe based on, you know, what the Most High led me, um, that this is preparing us for a war. You know, the Most High says, heart, not your heart. Um, that, you know, in this, that we should show love and that we shouldn't be cold. Um, but, you know, you have to kind of use discernment and wisdom again to see where he's telling us and who he's uh, commanding us to show love towards. You know, a lot of times, you know, the Most, the most High speaks um, on not suffering a witch, not blessing the wicked. You know, when you tell somebody once or twice, if they do not receive it, let them go. 
you know so the most high is 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 very uh specific in when we should and how we should govern ourselves toward towards uh people in general but specifically towards ignorant people and you know 90 percent of the time the people who we are facing the people who we are around are ignorant they're ignorant in speech language knowledge um and spiritually uh you know in every aspect of one's physical being uh they are ignorant and a lot of times we see that it's by choice we have all the technology in the world. Everyone has a social media. There's nothing but time to research. People are just afraid. You know, I said a quote that people are convicted in their disbelief. Um, that's very true. But getting back to the, the getting ready for war, you know, this is really showing us to um, have ultimate discernment. You know, this is like, uh, you know, for me growing up, I always uh, admired the spy aspect. Like, I was always a fan of Batman and James Bond. People may laugh at that, but I, the mannerisms that they had, the way they went about going about things, you know, how you did not know who you were dealing with until it was time. And then sometimes it was a little too late. Uh, the enemy tries to, um, you know, counter us with his 24-hour surveillance, but that's not going to be enough. That's not going to be enough. The, the surveillance, the tactics are only to hinder us from becoming prepared for battle. You know, it's a, it's the distraction because the more that we focus on the distractions, right, the less we become prepared for war. But, uh, you know, receiving this message now from the Most High, a lot of times, right, in boxing and battle and war and, and the training boot camp, they have distractions. Like, a lot of times, you know, through boot camp, they have pitfalls, they have distractions, so that in war you're focused. So this is teaching us to ultimately be focused through distraction. We have to have laser vision, okay? We have to have a goal, we have to set it. Our goals can't be more so worldly. I know I speak to a lot of people, and I used to be very materialistic. You know, I wanted the Bentley, I wanted the big house, you know, I wanted the Rolex, and, um, you know, I believe that the Most High understood that I was on the path to destruction, not that I would be, you know, robbing and killing for those things. I'd definitely be working hard for him, but that's just not where he had for me to be. But getting back on topic, we, we have to understand that distractions are good, you know, because ultimately if we were going through this for no reason, then this would be a terrible, you know, this would be a terrible event. If we were going through this for no reason, um, you know, this would be in vain. But we know through the scripture, we know through prophecy that um, all things work for good to those who believe in the Most High Yah, right? So we have to use these distractions and we have to see through them, right? Because you know that in war, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're a brethren if, or if you're a fellow soldier is, is shooting above you, uh, you're going to have, you're going to have people shooting all around you. Right? You have people, you have snipers, you got bomb squad, medics, so on and so forth. But through all of the commotion, the yelling, the different, uh, you know, passing of ammunition, and the, 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 all the, the, uh, the lifestyle of war itself, what? The sniper has to be focused. You have to remain on your target, right? So this is allowing us to see through people, see through the distractions, and only be, be focused on the Most High Yah. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's easier said than done. Trust me. You know, I'm tried every day, every day. Like they say, every day, <laughs> my man, Dante Wilder, every day we are tried. You know what I mean? Every day we go through some bullshit. Every day we out here, we striving, scratching and surviving, um, trying to keep our head above water and not really, you know, really knowing where our next dollar is coming from, our next job, our next opportunity, you know, so on and so forth. So, you know, we have to um, really use discernment. You know, a lot of times, you know, they have that voice, that voice to scroll, the voice of God technology. I no longer listen to voices in my head. I didn't pay attention to them. I get, I get voices in my head from time to time, urges and senses, you know what I mean? And I do not listen to them. I only listen, I allow the Most High to speak to me through His His way. And ultimately, you feel the Most High. 
You know what I mean? He'll, you can discern whether something is for you or for or against you. So I no longer listen to what people say. I no longer take uh, take heed to the things they say. You know, a lot of times they try to, you know, for me, it's policing. They try to use the police tactics, um, you know, because they want you to become fearful. Um, but we are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know what I mean? And so when I when I when I read that scripture, fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, that means that there's a component in us that is to be feared, right? There's there's a part of us that is to be taken very seriously, and there's a part of us that is a threat. And that, that part of us, which we have been fearfully and wonderfully made, is the part that the people around us are envious about, right? Because they are weak. They're cowards, right? They know that they are yes men. We are leaders. You know, prophets are leaders, you know, in a nutshell, there's no other way to look at a prophet other than being a leader. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm, I'm reaching the 12 mark here. I, I just want to tell everyone to be encouraged, to understand that this is the greatest war that will ever be fought. Uh, prophecy tells us that the battle is not ours, it's the most highs, right? And we have been sent here as foot soldiers. You know, we are, we are on the ground, we are foot soldiers. And he is above, like he says, he sits high and he looks low. And we know not the day or the hour, but we know that regardless of the time, you know, I, you know, I believe that the Most High is preparing us. Iron sharpens iron, right? We are the iron of the world. We are. We are the iron. Um, and I honestly believe, without a doubt, you know, I've actually prayed on this. I've actually asked the Most High to forgive me if I've been blasphemous and contrary to his word. But, you know, there's a part of me that don't, that just doesn't comprehend a physical death for us. Now, I know that we may be martyrs for the Most High Yah, but I honestly believe, you understand, the Most High knows all. I mean, He knows the future. He knew up until today me making this video. You know, so I, I honestly believe, and I, I pray that the Most High uh, allows you to receive this in good faith, that there's a part of us, you know, that we're, when it would be time for us to physically per do not perish but to transcend right to transition i think that moment right for us is when the ultimate rapture will become because you know where i'm looking at the most high didn't bring us through all of this we die daily you understand we die spiritually in moments we die physically we die mentally you know so we we are dying every day we do die right and i don't believe that the most high has really brought us this far for us to have to go through the death that everyone else is going to. Because, you know, they say to be absent from the bias present with the Most High. But that's if he knows you. You know, everybody thinks that the Most High is this happy-go-lucky, you know, person that you can pet, that he's a genie, and that, you you know, you make wishes and, you know, you grant wishes. And it's not true. You know, the Bible is for select persons. You know, the Bible's not for everybody. You know, I, I honestly believe that the Most High and His Word was not speaking to everyone. The Most High doesn't want everyone. You know, the Most High has a select VIP personnel. You know, it's not every, you know, that's why they say you have eyes to, eyes to see and ears to hear. You know, you know, the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in His sight. Uh, oh Lord, my great Redeemer. You know, so I honestly believe that, you know, we are the people who are able to, and I'm not the best, I, you know, I'm that's why I seek, uh, you know, guidance and wisdom for fellow brethren and their interpretation of the word, because through their interpretation, I give, I get life strength, right? And then I'm able to then meditate on what they're saying and then make videos like this. So I honestly believe that the Most High is speaking to his select chosen um, based on uh, research, you know that you do have the two-thirds which will be uh, washed away. You know, you have a lot of two-thirds of so-called black people, right, which, which we call coons. We call coons, we call imbeciles, ratchet, the ghetto. Though, we, you know, I, I, we're, you know, like I said, the Most High goes back to what he said. He says, you know, after you speak to a person once or twice, you wash their hands, wash your hands with them. You know, so, you know, you speak to your brethren and he doesn't receive it in peace and he wants to continue to do what he said. Let him go. Let him go. You know, it is, it is not for them to be in the kingdom. 
It is for them to cry, what haven't I, you know, what haven't I done this? And the, I put up Jesus pics on my, my phone and, you know, I went to church on Sunday and, you know, I, I said thank you. I opened up doors for old ladies. These are things that people are going to be looking at the most high and saying that they did. But I'm not here to judge. It says, you know, it says, uh, you know, let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread, drink of that cup, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord body. So I'm not here to judge. I can know, I cannot judge. One thing I can do is be observant, be aware, and share my input. Shalom.